with or not your truth or kindness, Lord. With or not your truth or kindness, Lord. Thank you for tuning into the Notice Podcast. I'm Susan Hookstra, your host. The Notice Podcast explores our need to be noticed through biblical musings and conversations with special guests, experience relevant topics, and encouragement as we take notice of how the God of mercy satisfies. On this episode of The Notice, Gratefulness. Can we really live thankful? Join me as I talk with Jane Cavender, radio host and new author of the devotional Living Thankful Today. We talk about what it means to be thankful, the challenges of living grateful, and how important it is to take notice. Jane Cavender is host of the Midday Show on Fuel FM and host of Living Thankful Today on WLJN, stations of Good News Media in Traverse City, Michigan. Together with her husband, D.C. Cavender, hi D.C., operations manager and on-air talent for Fuel FM, they have encouraged and supported Christian music in northern Michigan for nearly 20 years. You can find Jane out and about hosting Christian music concerts and events or speaking at women's retreats. One of her many activities is working at assisted living facilities where she had made friends with some special seniors who love her lively personality and, of course, her charming smile. She's a stepmom, and most recently she became an author of the devotional book, Living Thankful Today, where she encourages us with scriptures, prayers, and beautiful stories of individuals who are encouraging us to be thankful. Jane, I'm so excited to have you on the notice. Susan, thank you so much. I've interviewed you, and now you're interviewing me. The I tables know. are kind of flipped how right does, now. How does that feel? <laughs> We're going to get through it. We're going to get through it. It, it's, it does feel different, doesn't it? It does, just yeah, a little bit. A little bit different. Well, I thank you for all the times that you've had me on the, on the air and, and your support of the different things we're doing. So now I get to do it for you. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Well, you know, many of the people that who inspire the stories in your devotional, because I really want to talk about it. Tell me what inspired you to write this devotional. Well, I was speaking to a group of kids a couple weeks ago, and we were playing Easter trivia, and we were doing different things. And, you know, I got serious at the end of it. And I said, you know why I'm living thankful today? I had shown in my book. And I said, okay, say living thankful today. And they all did. I said, it's because of John chapter 3, verse 16. God so loved Mm. the world that he gave his son to all of us so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life and that is why i live thankful today i'm forgiven i'm a believer i am thankful today that i have jesus in my life and he's put so many incredible people in front of me and encouraged me i think through the holy spirit to just take notice of them yeah so we could finish the podcast there right there you go there you go that's it But there's, there's these stories that you talk about in your book. Yep. They involve these like really tender relationships you mm. form when you worked with seniors. So how has working with this population, how has that changed you? Well, I worked for nine years in assisted living, and it was a blessing. There were so many people um, that touched my life. Anywhere from, I think the youngest was right around 65 years old. She had some dementia. All the way up to 104 years old. Wow. And let me tell you, I say I worked with them. I partied with them, Susan. (laughs) They were were so much fun. (laughs) Right? And um, we would get together for music and bingo and a lot of times church. And they'd say to me, you know, if it wasn't for you, there wouldn't be any Jesus in this building. There wouldn't be any church. Mm. That was one of my goals. One of the women, when I left, and it was a big decision, it was a hard decision, gave me a rock that a pastor had given her. And I write a devotional about it. And the rock had been received. The pastor had given it to her. But she wanted me to have it. And it said on it, fishing for people. Mm. And I think that kind of encapsulates what I did there for nine years. Wow. I took good care of them, and they took good care of me without their even realizing it. They taught me a lot about life and what 
we all should take notice of. Well, it sounds like you spent time listening to their stories. Too. I did. I yeah. did. And how rich. Oh. How rich. Absolutely. Absolutely. When we talk about gratefulness or gratitude, its definition is, is a feeling of appreciation by mm-hmm. a recipient of another's kindness. Mm-hmm. So certainly that means appreciating the big things as well as the little things. So we talked about the big thing already, salvation, right? Mm-hmm. We have received so much from God just at salvation. We could stop right there. Amen. No, Amen. <laughs> but is it living thankful just about those big things? It's about the little things too. You know, I write 52 devotionals in this book. And can I tell you a couple stories? Yeah, absolutely. I had a woman, um, I'll never forget her. Her name was Mary and she had diabetes. She could couldn't see well. She used a walker, but she went to all of my activities. And one of the things that I got to do for these women is I painted their fingernails. And her family told me after she passed that she was never able to grow her fingernails until I started painting them. And each week she would come down and we'd take the polish off and we'd talk during that time. And I'd tell her how good her nails looked and everything like that. And she would always giggle. And I talk about that because she was so happy for that, just that little thing. And I pictured her at the gates of heaven when she saw Jesus giggling too. That's with how her I, painted nails. With her painted <laughs> nails. And I think about Mary and I think about how I was reminded just to be thankful for the little things too. Yes, the big things, but the small things too. I was running through the hall one day. I am apt to be in a hurry a lot of the time. And one lady was looking out the window. She said, Jane, stop. Look at the sky. Mm -hmm. And I looked up and it was a beautiful morning. And the sky was beautiful. And there was even, you could could almost see a heart in one of the areas. Mm -hmm. And I was just like so thankful. And I thought, you know what? I should slow down. I learned that lesson mm-hmm. that day. I should stop and take a moment to notice those things because God's creation is something that we all take for granted. But I start the book out with a story of forgiveness and a woman that I got to know. She was <laughs> she was somebody that I liked. She didn't have a lot of friends there, but I got her. She got me, I got her. Mm -hmm. And I made sure that she was at a lot of events. And she'd come by my office every morning and she'd go, are you ready to go? And her (laughs) voice was kind of like that. And I'd say, yep, I'm ready to go. And off we'd go to exercise or bingo. She never missed anything. She went to church each week and I was raised Catholic and I respect their Uh, meditation in saying the rosary. But each week as I led them, I decided to share something out of the Bible because I felt like they didn't have a lot of Bible knowledge. And one week I spoke about forgiveness. I asked all the people there, do you have somebody you need to forgive? Because if you don't forgive, you'll never get into heaven. Mm -hmm. Jesus says you need to forgive seven times, 70 times. I didn't know who heard the message, who remembered the message or what happened, but she went home and I just imagined that the Holy Spirit was working in her life. She met with her family the next day, COVID was still going on and she met underneath a gazebo with her family and I walked by and they seemed like they were all happy and everything. And the next day she passed away. Wow. I spoke to her daughter on that following Monday and we laughed, we cried and her daughter told me something that amazing that it happened. She goes, Jane, you won't believe this. But mom told me she forgave everybody in my life, in her life. She had been in an abusive marriage. She had people that had done her wrong and she had lost a daughter to cancer. She, I knew that she had some anger in her. Mm-hmm. I didn't know her entire story, but she had chosen to forgive. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if my words mattered to her, mm-hmm. But I'm thinking that between me and the Holy Spirit, she made her way to heaven because she forgave. And on that day, after writing that, I never took up for granted, as you don't, I imagine, too, that words do matter. They do. They They do. do. We've got to pay attention. The little things matter. And the little taking notice, like the painting the nails or just spending time listening to somebody's Mm -hmm. story. Like this podcast is about 
taking notice, yeah. right? And stopping to take notice. I remember after, right after COVID, of course, I'd been inside for a while, right? And it was spring <laughs> and it was sunny and I went outside. All of a sudden, like I saw this squirrel, <laughs> you know, walk running across the, the field and I heard the birds and, and I had never really took notice of that before. Yeah. And I and it was cool because I, of course, I know why, because I'd been sequestered, so to speak. <laughs> and then I come out, you know, to the to this beautiful nature. Those little things, God wants us to look at those little things because they tell us a bigger story. Uh-huh. And you don't know that little thing, that little gesture you don't know what, what it opens up in someone's heart. That's right. You just don't That's know. Right. And so I, I try. Okay, I'm, I'm not 100% successful. I'm not either. But I try to, the moments that I'm with people is try to honor that there's there's a story. There's something mm-hmm. behind there mm-hmm. that we don't know, you know, that we want to take notice of and to be grateful for that person. You know, Psalms 92.1, I love this verse. It says, it is good to say thank you to the Lord. It is well with my soul. Mm-hmm. I thought this was interesting because it says at the beginning that being thankful happens first mm-hmm. and that it is well with my soul. Mm-hmm. So have you have you seen that happen where thankfulness just changes the heart? Well, it changed mine. I wasn't always this way. I'd say about, oh, Maybe eight years ago, I renamed my radio station show, mm-hmm. uh, Living Thankful Today, and it sure changed my heart. There's two ways to look at what you're going through, either underneath it or above it. And we have choices to make every single day, you know, and those choices are hard. But you and I both know that people spend a lot of time stuck. And one of the ways that I feel people can get unstuck is just to look around them and maybe think a little bit more about what they're thankful for. If they've got a roof over their head, uh, there's something to live thankful for. They have a breath to take. And they have a breath to mm-hmm. take. I read something the other day, if they have a child to tuck in at night, live thankful. I mean, I could go through the list. I did a radio show once where I was thankful for my garage. You know, mm-hmm. and on a day like today, it's a little bit wintry out there. I'm thankful for that. There's always something to be thankful about. I think if people just stop and think about it, do I know that people have changed their ways and become thankful? I think I taught that to a lot of people I worked with at the Mm -hmm. assisted living home. Mm -hmm. But it's not like a little Pollyanna. It's not like just positive thinking. Oh, no. You know, you can try to think positively about something. This is much more powerful than that. Oh, but the conditions of this world, like what just happened in Nashville mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with that school shooting, yeah. it seems we struggle. We not only struggle with those big things, but we struggle with discontentment. Yeah. We get easily irritated at things. But this is more than a happy face or chasing away the blues. First Thessalonians 5.18 tells us to give thanks in all circumstances. Mm. But isn't that hard to do when we're faced with some of these things that are happening? Oh, it's so hard. I can't imagine what parents are going through in Nashville. I can't imagine uh, my granddaughter or my grandson being shot like that and killed. It is horrific. And the only way out is to surround yourself with people who are believers, I think. And if you're not in that community you'll eventually seek something out because you need that hope. It's about God. And I think, you know, I read one time that living unthankful is almost a sin Mm -hmm. because God's created all of this. Now, he'll work it out for his good some way, somehow in Nashville, but I can't imagine the hurt. There's a choice that we all have to make, and it's not going to happen today. That just happened yesterday. It may happen a month from now. But it, and it's a journey. I think it's absolutely a journey. So it's not just a positive Pollyanna stamp on life. It's actually a form of obedience to yeah, be thankful. I, yeah. In moments one, I read this recently, and it really, really helped me because they talk about this trajectory of falling away from God. Mm-hmm. Here's what they say at first. Romans one twenty one. For although they knew God... They neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him. Mm. Paul's talking about here, that's the first step to pulling away from God is ungratefulness. Mm -hmm. I believe that. So this obedience isn't just about 
oh, yes, we want to obey, but there's a reason why we want to obey. There's a reason why we want to be thankful. Mm-hmm. Is So we remain close to God. Yeah. I have um, one of my devotionals in my book, Living Thankful Today, is um, about a woman who lost her husband. She had come up from Florida for the first time in a long time with him on a golf outing. She usually didn't come. And she took more pills than she needed when she did come. Her husband ended up passing away. He had had a stroke sitting at a table at dinner after golfing, went to Munson Hospital. And she talked to me afterwards and she said, just be prepared. Be prepared is what she kept saying to me. We talked about a lot of things, but that came up several times. And she was referring to faith and a relationship with Jesus Mm -hmm. because if you don't have that, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it through what happened in Nashville. You're not going to make it through different things. And her message in one of my devotionals, be prepared. Be prepared and have that relationship with Jesus. Build that relationship. Find out how you can get that relationship with Jesus. Talk to somebody because that's the only way you're going to get through. And that's the only way you'll get to a... a, stance of thankfulness in your life. I'm a half glass full kind of girl. Do you know that about me, Susan? Um, Julie, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of am too, believe it or not. I grew up with kind of a cranky disposition. Actually. Did you? Okay. Mm-hmm. And now you're thankful. Now I'm thankful. I mean, God's done uh, work in my heart, but when I was little, I mean, I, I have pictures of me with my brothers and I'm cross my arms. <laughs> I'm like pouting and you know and I I remember seeing that picture not too long ago and I thought what was going on with me why was I so upset and it was one of those moments where my brothers got to do things I couldn't do you know and so, people can read your book to find and, out the and reasons gra- why ungratefulness right? ungratefulness sometimes can be mm-hmm. can be sort of envious yeah because yeah. if you're not grateful coveting. you're coveting something yeah. you want something that you don't have yeah. I think it's um, real important, too, to teach children thankfulness. I've got a grandson who thank, the, the parents are, thank grandma, you know, do this. And he sends me stuff, and there's thanks and all of that. What about thank you cards? Does anybody do that? Yeah, anymore? thank you cards. That's a great idea, too. And eat, yeah, just I to wish lift, I was better at that. <laughs> yeah, just to lift somebody up. But I think it starts at a young age, too. If you're in a home and you have children, start young, you know, and start there. And they may come home from school and say, I'm so thankful for, you know, and it'll start a dinner conversation or, or whatever. But Well, we actually do that at the small group that I have. I, I have, you know, we do an update every week and people tell us where they're at and they mm-hmm. have this emotion wheel kind of thing. But then we also ask, so tell me one thing you're grateful for. There you go. And... I started doing that because of you, because I thought, well, gosh, I need to, we all need to do that. We Mm -hmm. all need to find the one thing, because Mm -hmm. even though there's all this other stuff going on in our life, you know, the the one thing that's really prominent right now, though, Jane, in our culture and our society is is anxiousness. Mm -hmm. And as Christians, we just want to throw out a Bible verse and say, well, Philippians 4 says, do not be anxious about anything, yeah. but in every situation by prayer and petition, guess what's next? With thanksgiving, thanks. mm-hmm. present your requests to God. Mm-hmm. Do you do you think thank, living thankful can help us with our anxiousness? Absolutely. You know, I've got a Bible verse for you. All right. It's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. Um, I heard this this morning, and I knew I was talking to you, but... There will be terrible times in the last days, and perhaps we're there. I don't know, but people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, and unholy. That's why I encourage. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm bucking end times or anything, but we look around, and that's what we see. They know people know God, but they're not thankful, or they don't know God, they're not thankful. We're here. We're here. Right. With anxiousness, I always feel that if I can, if I get starting to get anxious or worried about something, there's something about stopping, taking notice, Mm -hmm. taking a breath, and just looking around. And literally, your breath 
is you're breathing in. You, when you breathe in, you're, Yahweh is your breath of yeah. life. And you're breathe, you, just to breathe mm-hmm. means you're still alive. And this is, I know sometimes the older community who are, who are aging, they start to feel like they don't have a lot of purpose. Yeah. And yeah. They, they're like, well, what's the point? Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and, and I know it's a big cliche, but I'm going to say it anyway. If you're breathing, God has the purpose for you. That's right. <laughs> you know, you can pray. You can, there's so many different things that mm-hmm. you can do um, out there. So, Well, I did say, you know, I'm a half glass full kind of girl, but one of my devotionals uh, talks about my husband having cancer and walking through that. And I, he was more calm than me. I'll just admit that. <laughs> but, um, you know, walking through that without high anxiety. And he came through it, and everything was clear at the end. And treatment wasn't what it was originally going to be, but we all get anxious from time to sure. time. But like you said, that breathe in and breathe out and thank What's the fear of the unknown? I yeah. think that's the thing about COVID, Jane, is that COVID, I don't know what I don't know. And that that's what made it so anxious is because we don't, we don't know. And yeah. I think we need to get comfortable with the unknown because mm-hmm. we we don't we don't know, but we know who knows. That's right, and that's the difference. And and I think sometimes when you're grateful, you look at things. It, it sounds really simple, and we talk about these verses, right? Mm-hmm. And we throw them out there, but I, there's got to be a verse that really really helps you stay grateful Hmm. this is the day the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad i'm trying to think where that comes from but it's it's a verse that i this is the day this is and i think there's a kitty song this is the The day day. (laughs) um and and it's funny that's why i like like working with kids and stuff mm -hmm. because you get back to the basics yeah and the basics are well gratefulness is a basic yeah it's basic but it's big yeah, I, you know, I walk around or I'll go into my or I'll go into my, people are walking around with a frown and I just, I just smile at them. I just try to make their day better or I take the card in or I do something. Well, my husband to- and I have this little thing at Meyer. <laughs> it's so funny, Jane. We go in and every time we go in the line where the person is, you know, checking us out, mm-hmm. we started this a uh, few years back. We'll look at their name tag and we'll just say, Hi, Mary, or hi, you... Jim, or something. Thanks for helping me today. You see you know, them. And then we, we started a conversation. We started be- becoming friends with the, the <laughs> checkout people at Meyer. And it was like, <laughs> That's we, great. we looked at it, and each time we walked in, it's like, okay, who, who, who does God want us to minister today? There's an opportunity everywhere we go. No yeah. doubt about it. I don't think there's anyone who will reject if you say thank you to them. That's right. That's right. Who will reject that? No. Yeah. You know, sometimes people will go, oh, that's nothing or something yeah. like that. But just It's a great that. way to start a conversation, though. Like you said, just to see their name tag and mention their name and, hey, thank you. How are you doing today? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Especially people like to hear their names. Absolutely. Jane? They work hard. <laughs> yes, who said? <laughs> hear their name. So tell us a little bit about where people can get your devotional. Yeah. Um, folks, it's beautiful. Really. Thank you. Take take a few moments and read this. It's yeah. it's, it's it gets you in the right spirit. It's my heart. You know, there's 52 devotionals. You can get it on Amazon. Living thankful today. Just Google that. You can go to wljn.com. We have a banner on our radio station page. You can order from that. Um, and I also have it available at the radio station at 1101 Cass Street. I tell people it's right next to the whiskey yes, joint I know. on the corner. I've and people know where that, that is, but they don't know where the radio station is. So, yeah, it is um, $13.99, $14 even at the radio station. But I didn't want to price it out of the market. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not here to make money on this. I am here to share my love for Jesus. And at the end of the book, I encourage people to accept him. That that's mm-hmm. the final final thing. To read the prayer, drop to your knees and make the choice to accept Jesus as your savior. Your life will never be the same. It will forever change. It gets back to John three sixteen, doesn't yep, it? It does. It gets back to that. Yep. For God to love the world. Yep. So what would you tell somebody out there who's struggling with being thankful? Last yeah. Night? I talked to somebody yesterday who's really going through 
some things that I can't even fathom what they are. And her father speaks to her every night and he knows that she doesn't have a relationship with Jesus and he just says, pray, just talk to God. So I would encourage you, whatever you're doing, if you don't feel thankful today, you can get there. Talk to God. Tell him what's going on. He already knows. Mm -hmm. Tell him what you need. And then look around and just think about, wow, but by the grace of God go I. That's what I think when I talk to people that can't afford $75 a night for a hotel room. But by the grace of God go I. But God has given me a roof over my head, my children. It might be hard every single day making ends meet, but there are people out there willing to listen. And there's a savior that wants to hear from you that is reaching down to lift you up. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Until next time, take notice. Well, I say this at the end of every podcast, but this episode prompted me to notice the connection between taking notice and living thankful. Too often, we don't take notice of those things in our life we could be grateful for. Maybe your husband diligently takes care of the garbage every week, but you never take notice. Or maybe someone opens the door for you or offers you an encouraging word. I think children's author Dan Gutman says it best when he said, Sometimes we spend so much time and energy thinking about where we want to go that we don't notice where we happen to be. But how do we live thankful when we still have bad things happening? Rick Warren, pastor of Saddleback Church and author of The Purpose Driven Life, said in an interview, I used to think that life was hills and valleys. You go through a dark time, then you go to the mountaintop, back and forth. I don't believe that anymore. Rather than life being hills and valleys, I believe that it's kind of like two rails on a railroad track, and at all times you have something good and something bad in your life. No matter how good things are in your life, there's always something bad that needs to be worked on. And no matter how bad things are in your life, there is always something good you can thank God for. So perhaps the challenge is to see the good amongst the bad. Or maybe it's even being thankful for the bad, knowing that in all things God will work together for good. Either way, I think the call here is to obey, and that means to live with the thankful spirit. So as you go about your day, take notice.